Good morning, everybody. Um, so we're going to try something a little bit different today um, with how we're going to review our Alice uh, protocol. So as you guys can remember um, that we adopted the a new way of doing our lockdowns um, and we are using the Alice uh, procedures. And again, this is a, another way to just empower you to make decisions based on the information that you know. Very excited that um, I was given the opportunity um, in early August to be able to also go through this with our all of our new staff members as well. So uh, pretty much everybody is going to be on the same page as far as uh, tra being trained. Um, so also just wanted to remind everybody that there is still um, part of this is still there is still a soft lockdown, which could be an that there's an active threat outside of the building. So it could be at somebody's home um, that we were alerted to. Um, it could be also that we are investigating something inside of the building and we need everything, all the halls cleared. Um, so this would mean that there is no active intruder in the building. We would communicate that with you, that we are in a soft lockdown and you are still able to teach during that time. However, we are not allowing any students to be walking around the hallways if we are in a soft lockdown, because there could be the potential that we would have to go into our ALICE protocols. Again, just to remind you again, ALICE is, um, what it stands for is alert. Lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. And there are two components to Alice. There's um, the awareness and the communication piece of it. And there's also what your response is in regards to how you are being informed. Um, so there's many options that you can have. Obviously, the number one option is we want to try to uh, get out, evacuate the building. But if we can't, we may have to lock down or barricade or um, you know, last procedure would be to counter, and that would mean to, um, to fight off the intruder. Uh, situational awareness, again, is something, it's, it's your perception. It's, it's, we do this all the time. Whether we're at work, um, you're, social, you're situationally aware when you're out at a grocery store or when you're at a movie, when you're at a restaurant. I know that a lot of people always say, oh, when I go to a restaurant or I'm sitting somewhere, I, I want to make sure that my you know, I'm not face, I'm not, my back isn't to the door. You want to be able to see everything. So that's your, that's your awareness. Um, again, this is no judgment. You know, the one thing that I will say, we've done a really good job in the past couple of years is making sure that anybody who enters this building has some type of identification, um, visitor's badge. It's, it's really bright. They have an orange lanyard. Um, I would always also say that, you know, if you see something, say something. So if there's something that just doesn't seem right, you see some random person walking throughout the building with any type of identification, it's okay to say something. Um, it's okay to, you know, if you don't feel comfortable approaching the person, you know, come and get somebody else and say, hey, do you know who this person is and why, should, why are they in our building? Um, you know, and just again, don't, it, there is no judgment when you are questioning that. Um, so again, we have the Cooper's color code of awareness, and this was taken from a, a U.S. Marine. Um, and it's, it's just a really interesting way to think about, you know, you know, even how you may react in different types of situations. So if you're in the white, you're completely unprepared. You're unaware. People in the white are oblivious. So, you know, head and head and phone, uh, earbuds, just absolutely no clue of what's going on around them. When you're in the yellow, you're alert, you're relaxed, um, you're aware of what's happening around you. You may walk, you know, with your head up, you're looking people in the eyes, kind of making sure that everything around you, you know, just seems, seems good. Um, really difficult to surprise a person in the yellow. When you're in the orange, you're going to have a heightened level of awareness. Um, something may just not seem right. It could also be, again, using your senses, you could hear a gunshot, you could smell something right away. Think about that when you hear something or smell something, you're right away like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Where is that coming from? Um, I also think like sometimes if you've ever been, you know, woken up in the middle of the night, whether that's your dog barking or, you know, something fell, you know, falls and you get that like <gasps> moment, that's, that's being in the orange, being aware of, of, of what's happening. Um, when you're in the red, the person is, you're completely, um, you're threatened. And it's, again, depending on the training you've received. So like, obviously our SRO Mario, when he's in the red, he knows what to do. Um, most of us probably 
whether we have that fight or flight, we may panic. We may not know what to do in, if you're in the red. And then lastly is the black. This is when you, literally your mental and physical responses are completely shut down. Um, you're not prepared. You're overwhelmed. You could literally just be frozen in what you're doing. So where we want to be, we want to be in the yellow at all times, if we can be. All right, so alerting. Um, again, we have our five, ses uh, five senses, so hearing. So what are you hearing? Did you hear a gunshot? Did you hear something? Did you hear a huge boom? Whatever it is. Um, did you see something? Maybe, again, going back to this person just doesn't look like they should be on our campus. Um, did you smell something? Did you smell gas? Did you smell gunpowder? Um, feel and taste are a little bit different. Um, when we're talking about Alice, but they're still part of our senses. So how we're, we're alerting is what you're receiving is from your senses. Now, when anytime we're going to send information, it's going to be in plain language. There are no code words. We're not using any of that anymore. Um, we're actually, you know, if we should get a phone call, you guys are in your classroom, or even if you are calling 911, they're going to ask you those types of questions. Where is the intruder going? Where did you see them on your campus? Um, what were they wearing? So you have to be very detailed and, you know, using, using your vision. Um, if you see a weapon, what color is it? What does it look like? Is it long? Is it short? Is it in their pocket? Is it in their shoe? Is it in their belt loop? Wherever it is, they're going to, you know, people are going to ask those types of questions of you. Again, if you're in your classroom, you're going to provide any information, you know, where are you located? What you saw? What do you think that that person looked like? That way it's able, we're able to, um, to know what we're, we're looking for. So again, we have our blue point. Um, this is our blue pull downs. Um, remember from last year, when you open this up, the clear glass, it's gonna make a really loud, high pitched noise. Um, that's okay. It doesn't mean that the blue point went, the blue point only goes once you pull that down. And this again is only for an active intruder. This is not for um, a fight or a, a shouting match, um, anything like that. This is an active threat to the building. Again, we also have our medical, our green pull downs. Um, those are for a very serious uh, metal, medical, you know, to alert Annie. Um, you know, if a student is going into some type of, you know, it could be any type of like shock, um, passed out. We can't, we, you can't wake the kid up. Um, that would be our, what the reason why we would use the medical. All right, evacuation. So this is obviously, this is the first thing that we want to do. We want to evacuate if we can, using all the information that we have to be able to evacuate. Once that blue point is pulled, there are a lot of different types of um, modalities that you can use on your cell phone that's able to tell you. It's going to send you a text right away, and it's going to tell you where the intruder is. Um, then from there, you are getting be getting information. Um, so obviously, if it's something's happening in the field house, and you're all the way down on the on the first floor, all the way down by um, you know A102, A104. You know, think about where you're at. It's in the field house. I can get out of there. So you're going to leave. Um, it's obviously our best. It's our best strategy if the if if it's safe to do so. Um, the purpose again is to put time and distance between yourself and the intruder. Again, being alert, using your senses to determine if it's safe to evacuate. Um, at this time, we are working with um, the Round Lake Civic Center um, to be our reunification site if we should have to ever be in this situation and evacuate. Now, we know, and again, we are completely empowering kids to be able to leave. If they can get out of here and they can go home or they can go to a friend's house or they can go somewhere, um, we, want them to, we want them to get out. But if we can't, and we need to get to a reunification center. We are um, looking at the Round Lake Civic Center right now. Is our um, that's our so it's a lot of um, a lot of paperwork that we're working with, but it is in the works. And right now we are pretty sh pretty sure this is where our reunification site is going to be. So again, if you can evacuate through a window, that may be your best escape plan. Um, you want to climb out if it's the first floor window and you can leave. Um, if it's on the second floor. And you can, and you feel comfortable doing that. Um, and you, and if you can't open a window, and it needs to be broken. You, by all means, break the window. You're going to hit it at the the top right corner um, because it has it has more flex rather than in the middle. 
Obviously, it's not going to break clean, so you're going to want to make sure you remove those shards of glass if you're going to be leaving out a window. Um, if you can, drape anything over, um, whether that's a belt, a cord, clothing, anything like that can hang. Um, you're going to want to have your, your, your legs out because that's going to decrease the distance from the drop. Make sure that you know, you're know you surveying the area. Hopefully it's grass or mulch or any type of, obviously if it's concrete, I, I would not recommend that. I'm also not recommending anybody, and it would be a big no to leave the third floor. That would be not good. Um, so just make sure that you're you're aware of if you're going to be doing any type type of leaving the building through a window. All right. So next is just talking about an enhanced lockdown. So that would also be meaning our our barricading situation. Um, so locking down is more than just locking your door. You're going to need to do more to create a barrier between yourself and the intruder. Um, so whether that's you know, a file cabinet, chairs, desks, anything in your room that's going to be able to distract and create time and space between you and the intruder. Um, obviously, they want to move fast and they want to harm as many people as possible. If they encounter obstacles, they're going to more than likely move on and give up. Um, if you can't lock your door, make sure you have this something ready and available, whether that's a belt. Um, it could be a cord, like an extension cord. I know that a lot of time last year after we did our first um, try at this, some of you guys brought in extension cords and put that in your classroom. Um, we also have the fire hose idea. I want to make sure that you guys do take time at some this week and look through your um, classrooms to make sure that your fire hose is in there. If not, please um, let me know and we'll do that through a Google Doc. Um, if the door swings outwards, you're going to need to secure it, whether that's using a chair, a power strip, anything, any large furniture that you can get in their way. If a door swings in, um, using a, if you have a door wedge, um, use that to secure the door as well. So these are just two really nice examples of, of what you can do. This is where we would also put that fire hose over the, the louvre to make sure that it does not open. Doesn't mean that it's foolproof, but it does. It's going to create time and distance between you and the, and the intruder. Um, in the lockdown, obviously, we're going to look and make sure that your buckets are in your room. Um, that this could be an extended period of time. It could take longer. It could take an hour. It could take two hours. It could take multiple hours. But just making sure that you have the things that you need on hand to make the classroom more comfortable and tell the police, because that is his who is going to let you out of the classroom. It's the police. It's not me. It's not Dr. Roscoe. It is the police. All right, last is our counter strategy. We worked on this last semester, and this is, as you can see, um, this is your intruder, and these are the people throwing water bottles and McDonald's cups at him. Um, so what this is doing is it's distracting. It's making sure that um, that they can't see. Um, and it's also you're you're in control. So what are you using to control the situation? So you're overwhelming the decision making process of the of the attacker, more things coming at their face and their body, they're going to automatically it's just the way that your body is trained is to flinch and and lock up. Um, the brain can't control uh, or perform two functions at the same time. Um, and in this event, this would be exactly what we're thinking is throwing something. They're not going to be able to, you know, point something at you and do this at the same time. Um, it's going to provide time and another technique and another strategy for you to use. Environmental objects around us make the best distractions. So um, we've used, I know I've used this example of a water bottle. Um, a lot of us are carrying these around and they're hard and they would hurt. Um, staplers, Chromebooks, a chair, a desk. I mean, some of you have podiums still in your classroom. Anything that's going to be used around you, look around your classroom, look around your office space of the things that you can use. And again, the pathway to the brain is through the visual pathway of the head. So again, trying to make sure that you're aiming at that person's face. Um, controlling. So controlling the intruder. Now, again, I'm going to put my disclaimer out here. This is not what I want people to do. However, some people just have that natural instinct that they are going to go for it and they're going to take this person down. 
Um, grabbing and controlling the appendages um, of the intruder will prevent him or her from using the weapon appropriately. Again, personal decision and will be accomplished if many people do this. One person alone, it's one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm not recommending it. You're gonna wanna control the arms, the legs, and then the head. Um, and then once that person is down, obviously the, the goal here is to also get that, that weapon out of that person's hands. Um, you're not going to hold the weapon. You're not going to point it up in any type of direction. Um, control it by using, you know, kicking it, placing it out of as far as out of reach that you can. And then somebody else, if, if it's, you know, it's a classroom of, of students or, you know, if you have multiple adults in a room, making sure that that weapon is contained, whether that's a recycling bin, a garbage can, just out of the way. All right. So, I want to just reiterate a few things. So you have options. Okay. Again, Alice is empowering you to make those options, evacuating, getting out of, out of the building, locking down, barricading, making sure that you're creating time, you're creating space um, and distance from that intruder. And the last thing is control, um, control and countering. So making sure that if, if the, the intruder does enter a space that you're at, you have that option to, to fight back. Um, so after this, you're going to be given um, some scenarios, uh, five scenarios. Uh, get through as many as you can. Um, talk through them. Um, there's two different things that you're going to think about. Think about when you're doing a scenario where you're at. Are you in your classroom? Are you in your office space? And then the second thing is, is maybe think about what would you do if you were in a hallway or if you're in a cafeteria, you're in a larger space. So use some different types of, of in, you know, where you are in your environment to be able to do these scenarios. Um, again, there is no right or wrong. And we're going to learn from each other because somebody may say, hey, I would do this. And that's great. So everybody's going to have a different, different mindset um, when we are talking through these scenarios. I'm going to have a running uh, Google Doc open that you can ask questions. Um, I will be leading my own department, so I'm not going to be able to get to those right away, but I will answer those um, in a way that you're going to be able to get some, some information as well. I will also be sending out a Google Doc after this. It, just make sure you look at your fire to see that your fire hoses are in your space and in your classrooms. Um, if you don't have one, please let me know and where the heck would they go? Um, but things do mi are missed. Um, so, and also we're going to be talking with, about students and what our, our next drill will look like with kids um, using the Alice protocol. I would like to use the actual um, blue point so everybody is able to hear what it sounds like. Um, and it's and it constantly loops and it's going through. So um, stay tuned for that. And um, thanks again. And I appreciate your time. I know this is a weird way to do things, but um, just based off of time, but I, and also space, I just wanted to make sure that we we're able to, to still have a conversation about building uh, safety and security. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Wednesday.